Okay. On Tuesday night, the Nashville Predators and the Detroit Red Wings were playing a game in Nashville. Uh, Nashville won two nothing, and pretty pretty quiet game uh, from a hockey front. From an officiating standpoint, unfortunately, Tim Peel, uh, longtime NHL official, was caught on a hot mic, basically admitting to the fact that uh, NHL referees manage the game far more than anyone would hope they do. And he essentially said, I had to call, I had to make a call early on Nashville because dot, 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 and it cuts off. The next morning, early the next morning, the NHL releases a statement. Um, and the, the important part is Tim Peel no longer will be working NHL games now or in the future. They didn't explicitly say he he was, you know, quote unquote, relieved of his duties or anything. He was going to retire, right? He was going to retire. So that is important to note. He was going to retire in the next month or so. There's a lot coming out of this. And I'll say my two cents right off the bat. I think I think the NHL thought this punishment was going to be a lot uh, better received than it was. And I think they thought it was a lot heavier and uh, more of a proper punishment than it ended up being. I think NHL fans saw right through it, what, what was happening. He wasn't fired, I don't think. And I, I think all it was, they said, okay, you know what? We have to make a statement here. Uh, we're going to scapegoat you. We're just, you're done refereeing for the end of the year. And then you're going to retire. I don't, I, and this is all speculation from my standpoint. I don't think it affects his pension or anything like that. The NHL thought the problem here was Tim Peel specifically, not officials game managing the league as a whole. That is the problem here. So I'll there's a there's a lot to go a over. A lot here. to unpack here, yeah. We'll try to we'll try to do this methodically. Uh, Nick, we'll start with you. Just your thoughts on the incident itself. Uh, we'll get to the punishment in a second, but when you first heard that video. Were you surprised? What What were you thinking? Well, I, I think I speak for all three of us here. I, I wasn't surprised that that's a conversation that officials are having with each other or that's something that they're thinking. I think that's really been evident for a long, long time that this is how NHL officials call games. They call it to even things up. They have, you know, they live by terms like game management and stuff like that. Like who even knows what that is. They don't call things by the rule book. Again, we've had a lot of discussion about that. And uh, particularly some of the star players that have been hurt over the past couple of years. We talk about this endlessly, the problems with NHL officiating. So I wasn't surprised to hear it. Do I feel bad for Tim Peel? Yes. And no, because, you know, I don't feel bad for referees getting caught up in this because they're not doing what their job is, which is to call the game by the rules. But I do feel bad for him in the sense that he is essentially being uh, the scapegoat of this entire incident, because um, like you said, Luke, rather than, you know, promoting some sort of discussion about the integrity of the game as a whole, they're pretty much holding Tim Peel in front of everybody and saying, this is the problem. We've taken care of it. And that's sort of what the NHL statement reads to me, at least. Um, yeah, exactly. with regards to Tim Peel. And so I feel bad for him in that sense because he is not the problem. He is just a very small piece of one large problem. Patrick. Yep. This is the uh, tip of the iceberg. I'm not a fan of Tim Peel as a ref. Uh, just I, I, there have been plenty of games where he's made some extremely ridiculous calls, but I'm not going to make, you can't make Tim Peel the guy to blame. And he is the reason this problem exists. This is a much bigger problem. He just got caught saying it out loud. Um, Clearly all officials think this. And I saw a tweet from Justin Bourne and and it says, he said, what's crazy about the Tim Peel thing is Matt Duchesne says he was talking to Philip Forsberg in that clip and said it to their bench. That's how comfortable refs seem seem to be with the game management being an accepted part of what they do. Um, This also speaks to, how how refs go about certain games some games they let a lot of things go some games they will call every single thing and i feel like this kind of sparked a bigger debate on twitter which is should refs just call every single penalty no matter what no matter the state of the game no matter the time of the game no matter who's playing or is there kind of a different rule book depending on the type of the game and that kind of became a bigger discussion but look i think evening out games is stupid i really do i think if if Vancouver's playing Ottawa and Ottawa takes 
10 ridiculous penalties and they're spending most of their time on the pen, on the penalty kill, that's their problem. And if Vancouver does nothing, but you have to have a makeup call to give them a chance, I don't think you need to do that. Whoever takes penalties should be responsible. Um, yeah, and it, it's just interesting. And I just think the NHL, you know, at first I saw it, I was like, whoa, I've never seen the NHL take action like this. We, we've This year especially, I think has been one of the worst years for officiating in the Canadian division, in the North division at least. And I'm not saying this as there have been plenty of missed calls against the Habs. I've watched Sens games. I've watched Leafs games. There are blatant cheap shots that are occurring every single team to a lot of different players at a level I haven't seen in a long time. And I'm not just saying this as a Habs fan. And whenever we think, okay, well, when's this officiating going to get better? When's this officiating going to get better? They finally let go of Tim Peel. I thought, oh, that's huge. Then immediately after I was like, no, that's only the, that's only the start of the problem. So um hoping there are some bigger changes coming, but I, I doubt it given the, so NHL. I think, I think the NHL thought they got lucky here with this incident, a referee yeah. that was about to retire. Um, they figure, wow. Okay. We've just caught this guy red handed. Let's make a, let's make, um, uh, let's make an example out of him. And they, they don't fire him. They say he's not refereeing any more games until, like now or in the future it's the weirdest wording but it's clear is the only way to get around the fact that they weren't firing him um and i guess the the nhl just assumed that you know it would it would just fly with the fans it absolutely did not and pat you make a good point about um should should referees call every single penalty regardless of uh you know the context of the game or is there a middle ground and i think I think you have to understand that that there kind of has to be a middle ground because if referees called every single penalty, regardless of the situation the game was in, fans would be irate, like absolutely furious. Because even fans understand, you don't you don't call a a iffy tripping penalty in overtime in the playoffs. You just don't. So that's and, and that's the other thing. There is a different rule book then. There is. There is. You yes. know, there is. I, Anthony Stewart said it last night in the first period or the third period, it's different in the regular season versus the playoffs. It's different. And fans understand that. So when, when I hear people saying you need to call everything exactly by the book, I just, I, I don't know if they understand what they're asking for. I, yeah. I don't think I'm saying call everything by the no, book. No, I know. I think I, you're, yeah, you're just bringing up that. Yeah. Just saying like, if a team is taking way too many reckless penalties, Montreal, for example, is notorious for this at the start of the year, they took way too many penalties if Vancouver doesn't take any penalties, you shouldn't, ha- you, I don't think you have to even it out at the same time. If there is a game that is physical from the get go and the refs set the tone early and the players set the tone and kind of roll back on some of the calls, put the whistles away. And then there's a soft slashing call that you call. Then I think that's an issue. And yeah. I feel like that's why in theory, yes, everything should be called as is. If a penalty is a penalty, you call it no matter what. But at the same time, you don't want that when there's a tight game, if guys are getting elbowed in the head and there's all sorts of reckless plays going on and you don't call that only to call a minor trip, then it's an issue. So let's, sorry, Nick, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I, well, I was going to say, I think to some degree though, I, I'm not saying start tomorrow calling everything by the book and, and, you know, have some massive overcorrection, but I think it's something you need to eventually do over the course, starting with a fresh preseason, you got to start calling everything like in my opinion, at least how I see it, call everything by the book, how it is, no matter what time of the game it is. Because I think when you do that and you start setting a tone for that as a league, you're going to have correction in the way that teams play, in the way that they deploy players, in what situations, how they're operating on the ice. Obviously, I think that's, you know, that's a big thing to ask. And to some degree, there's going to be a lot of overcorrection with that. Like you're going to have early on in a regular season, you're going to have games with a lot of penalties as teams learn to adjust even maybe a whole year with a lot more penalties than usual. But I think for the integrity of the game, which is what the NHL is preaching and to protect that, I think at some point you just have to start fresh, clean slate, and just have that correction in the way that NHL hockey is played and sort of modify it so that it fits what the rules of the game are. That's how I see it. And that's a huge ask and maybe something that'll never happen in our lifetime. But if that's what they're really about, protecting the integrity of the National Hockey League, then that's something you got to look at doing. Okay. So Patrick, you just touched on it um, in, in talking about refs setting the tone. 
and whether whether it's setting the tone um, by calling you know calling two quick penalties right off the bat, you know, if there was a, a choppy game the other night and they try to kind of calm things down, or it's what Tim Peel did the other night um, in terms of game management where you where you say oh I I need to do this because of this and just kind of the, the overall idea of refs having maybe a bit too much control over the sway of the game. And uh, I mean, we've talked about it. It's been a thing for a long time. Um, as a Canucks fan, I can think back to uh, Alex Burroughs uh, years ago, uh, 2010, the 2009-2010 season, he uh, he called out a, an official for basically admitting to him what he was doing he had the official said he he had to call Alex Burroughs for something that happened in a prior game uh to even it out and Alex Burroughs went off in the post-game scrum just exposing the referee and saying it's incredibly unfair Burroughs was fined for that Burroughs was fined for making those comments and basically exposing something that everyone kind of knows referees do so I, I want to ask you guys as um, not necessarily this year in particular, but referees managing the game, do you think, and we've talked about it, but do you think there is a, there's a spot for, for that concept of game management in today's NHL? Patrick. I do and I don't. And it's just so tricky because when I, when someone says, do you think that refs should even out the game? I want to say no because I don't think they should. And I feel like there's two types of evening out. There's evening out when you when a team is taking all the penalties and a team doesn't have a power play all game and you want to give them a chance. And then there's evening out where you mess up a call and I, you see it all the time. Someone there's a, there's a trip that the ref calls. You see the replay. It wasn't actually a trip. He falls. And then just a couple minutes later, he'll call it another team. And as, as fans, we acknowledge, oh, you know what? That was probably a makeup call. We deserve that given what happened before. That happens all the time when you're watching hockey. And now that we're talking about this issue. I'm realizing it more. There are plenty of calls where, you know, I watch hockey with my roommate and we say, we probably deserve a call here. You know, there's been 10 in their favor. Why don't we have anything yet? We probably deserve one. And then there's a weak call. Evening out. I want to say, no, the game should just happen as is, but it's tough. And I feel like sometimes having a call that goes to other teams favor kind of makes sense. It's a, it's a hard, it's a tough, it's a gray area. It's a hard line to identify. Uh, but I'll lean towards no. There should not be any any influence on the game. It should just be what happens on the ice is what happens on the ice. Yeah, I'll I'll lean towards no as well because I think at the end of the day, NHL referees are protected a lot more than referees in other sports. You know, um, an NBA official makes a bad call. It's it's really hard to even up uh, calls in other sports like basketball or something like that. So a lot of those times the official bears that responsibility. That's part of their job. Just the same that a player can make mistake, make a mistake that costs their team points or a game or a goal against officials also have that, you know, responsibility to try their best to call things the way they are and not affect the game as a whole. So I think you, you sort of got to remove that protection aspect for referees, you know, make them, if they have a bad call and it affects the outcome of a game, you know, very rarely does that happen, but they got to bear that responsibility. And that's just part of the human nature of their job. And while that's a hard concept to get behind sometimes, and it sucks, that's, that's professional sports. That's the human part of it. So, which is why I would pretty much lean towards, no, you got to get rid of game management. You just got to call things the way they happen. Okay. So looking into the future and, you know, one more question here as we wrap up in terms of precedent, uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion as this season plays out and probably in next year as well in, in regards to how this, how the release of Tim Peel is going to affect NHL officiating, um, just last night, there was a late call against Calgary as they were down in the third period. Um, that's that's the kind of call maybe you don't see all the time. A team losing late in the third, they get a penalty against, basically eliminating their chance at coming back. Uh, do you guys do you guys think there's going to be a change, um, n- not from the NHL level, but just from an, uh, the referees level and how they officiate games from here until until the end of this season, at least. Nick. No. Oh. 
I, I think so to a degree, because I think they're sort of realizing now their jobs may be on the line. I think that's definitely a conversation referees are having. I don't think you're going to see anything drastic, but that's just human nature. If something happens to a coworker, you're going to naturally react and maybe change a bit how you operate on a day-to-day basis. And I think you're going to see that a bit with referees. They're just going to you know, look at calling things a bit more by the rules or they're just going to at least try to protect themselves. They're going to be a lot more cautious of a hot mic, I'll tell you that much. But um, just in terms of their job, I think they're going to be a little bit more protective. Well, that's a good point because they, they did wear their mics yesterday. Um, there was discussion, would they wear mics after this happened? And they did. So, Pat? Uh, I th- don't think there's going to be a big change. Honestly, I think there could be a little one seeing and how things are called, like Nick said, call things more close to the rule book. But I think this is only being talked about because Tim Peel was caught. Obviously this was never talked about before the national hockey league never talked about it before at any, any level uh, fans, I think kind of grew to accept it this year, especially where officiating has been brutal uh, goalie interference, especially uh, continues to be the most inconsistent. No one knows what it is. And I can think to the, the Habs sends game a couple weeks ago, Nick, where Gallagher and Murray got up and then 10 seconds later, they called it goalie interference. I can think of 20 other goalie interference examples. Anyway, the NHL never really made this a public discussion until someone got caught. I think things are mostly going to stay the same. And no matter what changes in officiating, people are going to link it back always to Tim Peel when sometimes it's probably just regular officiating. So if there's a change, it'll be slight, but I'm not expecting anything too big. Well, this certainly will not be the last we hear of this and hopefully it starts, um, you know, moving in the right direction in, in a, in a general sense. 